Hi, I'm Keith Baker, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about analogical transfer and the severe limits our cognitive systems place on that process. I have some caveats. I'm going to make some simplifications from some fairly sophisticated studies. If you want some additional information, the references are at the bottom of each slide. I'm going to make a claim here, and that is that people, almost all humans, have a profound problem with analogical transfer. Analogical transfer is really the process where we take a principle and use it to solve a new but related problem, an analogous problem. This is what we mean when we say, apply your knowledge or do some problem solving. It's what most everybody thinks about when we, quote, use our knowledge to solve a new problem. Analogical transfer is considered a high level of thinking. Turns out, however, humans are stunningly poor at analogical transfer. It turns out that problems, almost all problems, have two types of structure. The surface structure, which are details that don't affect the solution whatsoever, and then what's called deep structure. That's the core feature of the problem. And you'll see here on the slide, I've undercolored deep structure. I've made it so it's hard to see, because it is. Most people do not see that. What most people see are what are called the surface structure aspects of the problem, and they use those aspects to try and transfer and solve a new problem. But they're irrelevant, and so it doesn't work. Deep structure is hard to see. Most people miss that. If you want to have a little bit of fun with this, I recommend you go to your Google at the end of this talk and type in MIT graduates light bulb and battery. There's a fun video there. It's just about three minutes long, and you'll see very bright people who know a lot about electricity who are unable to do a very simple task because they can't transfer their information to this new domain shown in that video. In logical transfer, can be easy and work well when something is very simple. That's called near transfer. This experiment I'm going to show you is very sophisticated, and I'm going to explain this with an analogy, not the actual experiment, because it's very complicated. On the y-axis, we, we have here how these students are doing uh, as far as getting things correct. First, we're going to take our example of our rule-based, very easy process, something like addition as an example. If you can learn to add 3 plus 4 and 6 plus 7 and so on, then adding a new set of numbers is not a very hard process. They are analogous but very similar one to the other. And so if you've been getting feedback and doing very well and you keep doing these problems, and then right here at the broken line, you have an analogous problem, meaning new numbers, that's not hard. You continue to get them all very correct. Another analogy, if I learned how to tie my left shoe, then tying my right shoe wouldn't be too hard. That's very near transfer because the surface structure is so similar and the deep structure is identical. Left shoes and right shoes are very similar. Deep structure is the same. Now take a look at the process that's more difficult down here, what's in the red dots. Firstly, notice that even with practice and with feedback, these students are not able to do particularly well. Then right here at the dotted line, they change the game and ask them to apply this information to a completely new but analogous situation. And you can see they fail very badly. They go right down to what is random chance. This is literally doing flipping a coin. So this would be analogous to describing everything about a myocardial infarction. The surface structure of a myocardial infarction is chest pain, shortness of breath, things like that. The deep structure, what's going on deep within the person is the process of atherosclerosis, plaque rupture, blood flow limitation, ischemia, organ dysfunction, which causes all of the superficial changes such as chest pain and so on. Now, a thrombotic stroke or a, a cerebrovascular accident has a radically different surface structure. People suddenly can't talk. They might become unable to move part of their body because of the stroke. But the deep structure is identical. Atherosclerosis, plaque rupture, limitation of blood flow, downstream ischemia to the organ of interest, in this case the brain, causing a whole new set of symptoms. So the surface structure, radically different, deep structure identical. So if you can understand one, you can understand the other, but you can see that surface structure gets in the way of understanding the other process quite a lot. So for example, if you understood a myocardial infarction, it wouldn't do you very much good to understand why someone had the symptoms they did with a stroke unless you understood the deep structure. Next, I wanna show you a study that shows a way to improve your ability to do learning so that you can understand analogous processes and transfer your information a little bit better. Here we have our college students, shown right here in our little stick figure like usual, and they're going to be randomized and their learning conditions will be two different ways of learning. One is going to be learning a series of different painters and they're going to be shown, for example, here we have painter number one and they're going to be shown six different paintings by this same painter. So they're going to see six examples of this painter. 
Then we're going to change our painter and we'll have painter number two and this person's going to see six examples of this painter and so it goes. The other group is going to have a what's called a fully randomized process where in episode number one they're going to have a painting from painter one then a different painting from a different painter followed by a different painting from a different painter and so it goes. So everyone's going to see the same paintings but it's going to be all blocked like this or masked or completely interleaved in this case here. Then the test is going to be on figuring out who is the artist for completely new paintings that were by the same artist. So you have to apply what you know about what the artist normally looks like to identify the new paintings that will be shown to the students. So you can see that in the case of learning them all at one time in the single process, they learned a number of the painters, but not particularly well. In contrast, when they mixed them up the way they did, they learned the new paintings much more effectively. This probably occurs because the learner is having to compare and contrast all along this time. They're having to compare each of the new paintings to try and figure out what is the new element, why is this painter different than that next painter. They're figuring out deep structures of what makes those paintings unique to that painter. And then when they're shown new paintings, they can do much better. So it's comparing and contrasting to get at the deep structure. In another study uh, that's related to the concept of comparing and contrasting, we have our MBA students shown here who are randomized to study two different negotiation cases. In both cases, they get the identical cases. It's what they do with the material that's going to make all the difference. Reading each one sequentially and studying it top, comparing and contrasting in the bottom. Then they're given a completely new task, which is to a two-party negotiation. And the question is, who is going to end up with more contracts at the end of this two-party negotiation? And you can see here that the group that did the comparison and contrasting ended up with far more contracts than the group who studied one and the other. So apparently, when you do the comparison and contrasting, you're able to understand the deep meaning of this and then transfer it to a new domain, as in the case of contract negotiations. Do you want learners to recognize something? Then teach using concrete examples. You do that because the concrete examples, by being slightly different on the surface, will build what are called schema so that they get a good broad variety of what a case looks like. Concrete examples can be good for recognition. When you give a variety of examples, the next example in line is likely to be recognized. On the other hand, if you want people to apply their knowledge to a new circumstance, you're best off with abstract concepts because studying the abstract concept allows you to get right at the core or the deep structure of something which allows you to transfer it to a new situation. People don't like this sort of work. It's much more difficult than concrete examples, but it's much more effective for transfer to new situations. Thanks very much for coming along on this short walk on the Expert Pathway.